Hello. My name is Jacob Lesko, and today I have for you I'm Allergic to Cats from the Theory of Relativity, Halloween from Rent, and My Name is John Wellington Wells from Gilbert and Sullivan's The Sorcerer, and Chris's monologue from The Play That Goes Wrong. For over a year, I've hidden from Julie each anaphylactic display. Cause she's such a dear. If she knew how cats make me suffer, she'd give them away. But she is my world, I live for her truly. Julie loves cats, and I love Julie. So she tickles their toes, and I smile as my throat starts to close. But I vow that she'll never suppose. I'm allergic to cats. Well, Dr. O'Hara, I fear that I've buried the headline. The point of this story is murky, I have to concede. I hope that I've shown you tonight. I love your daughter with all of my might. So humbly I stand, asking you for her marital hand. Wedded life will be blissful and grand. With Julie and Meowser, Miss Mew, Cookie Puss, Alexander, the Dander, the Pea, and me. <laughs> Why are entire years strewn on the cutting room floor of memory? When single frames from one magic night forever flickering close up on the 3D IMAX of my mind. That's poetic. That's pathetic. Why did Mimi knock on Roger's door and Collins choose that phone booth back where Angel set up his drums? Why did Maureen's equipment break down? Why am I the witness? And when I capture it on film, could it mean that it's the end and I'm alone? My name is John Wellington Wells. I'm a dealer in magic and spells, in blessings and curses, and ever filled purses, in prophecies, witches, and knells. If you want a proud foe to make tracks, if you'd melt a rich uncle in wax, you've but to look in on the resident gin number 70 Simmery Axe. We've a first rate assortment of magic, and for raising a posthumous shade, with effects that are comic or tragic, there's no cheaper house in the trade. The filter, we've quantities of it. And for knowledge, if anyone burns, we're keeping a very small profit, a profit who brings us unbounded returns. For he can prophesy with a wink of his eye, peep with security into futurity, sum up your history, clear up a mystery, humor, proclivity, for a nativity, for a nativity. He has answers oracular, bogey spectacular, tetrapods tragical, mirrors so magical, facts astronomical, solemn or comical, and if you want it, he makes a reduction on taking a quantity. Oh! If anyone anything lacks, he'll find it already in stacks. If he'll only look in on the resident gin number 70 Simmery Axe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cornley Polytechnic Society's spring production of The Murder at Haversham Manor. I would like to personally welcome you to what will be my directorial debut and my first production as head of the Drama Society. We are particularly excited to present this play because for the first time in the Society's history, we have managed to find a play that fits our company's numbers perfectly. If we're being honest, a lack of numbers has hampered past productions, such as last year's Chekhov play Two Sisters, or last Christmas's The Lion in the Wardrobe, and of course our summer musical, Cat. This is the first time the Society has been able to stage a play of this scale, and we are thrilled! Of course it's no secret we usually have to contend with a small budget, though as we had to in last year's presentation of Roald Dahl's classic James and the Peach. Of course, during the run of that particular play, the Peach went off and we were forced to present a hastily devised alternative entitled, James, where's your Peach? This year, we have managed to stage a play as it should be and cast it exceptionally well.
Of course, no one will forget the problems we've had with casting before, such as in our 2010 Christmas presentation of Snow White and the Tall Broad Gentleman, or our previous year's pantomime, another Disney classic, Ugly and the Beast. But now, on with the main event, which I have no doubt will be our best production yet. So without any further ado, please put your hands together for Susie H.K. Bridewell's thrilling whodunit, The Murder at Haversham Manor. 